Thanks, Chris, and uh, thank you, everybody. It is nice to be back in Vancouver. I called this city home for 17 years, but family took me back to Ontario. My wife still keeps screaming about it every once in a while, especially in the middle of winter, as we've had back there for the last two years. Um, now, I'd like to do a proverbial speaker thing here and just get a show of hands in terms of the people that are here. Uh, just show me who here is a parent of an autistic child. Okay, this is good. Um, kind of keep those hands up. I'd like to get a little bit of feedback on how many people of you are doing active biomedical treatments. Okay, we see a few things, a few hands go down there. So, a lot of my presentation today, what uh, I'm going to be talking about is some research that I did through my clinic in Mississauga uh, last year. The research was really intended to try to identify trends to help give parents that I'm working with more confidence about implementing biomedical interventions. I think here in Canada, there's still a lot of uncertainty about biomedical. Um, other things that we will talk about or I will talk about in the midst of the presentation that just, I think, continue to leave a little bit of doubt and uncertainty uh, as to what biomedical treatments to do, whether you should be doing biomedical at all. And for me as a practitioner, and with the parents that I see, I get a lot of feedback, a lot of people coming to me because I do testing. If you test, you know what's there, you know what needs to be treated. So um, a lot of the presentation today will go into the testing that I do, typically out of the first visit. Um, and it's testing that will lead to work that you can do as a family for your children, probably over the course of the first year that you'd be undertaking biomedical stuff. And which is gonna give you some pretty high percentage returns. And you know, so it's, we're looking at factors that really do give good positive outcomes in your children. So a little bit of my background, some of it which Chris alluded to. Um, I've been working with autistic children since 2001. Um, did my DAN training in September of 2005. In there in between, what brought me into uh, getting to know autism, working with the children, is an allergy desensitization treatment that I do called Nambudrapad's Allergy Elimination Techniques, or NAET. So in essence, uh, it was the families, the initial families that were seeking me out just because of the fact that I did this treatment. Through them, I learned about autism. I learned about biomedical interventions for them. I mean, I knew them as a naturopathic doctor. All the things I'm gonna be talking about today are things that I was trained at at Bastyr University back 11, 12 years ago. But I wouldn't have known, as I know now, how to integrate that into a course of treatment successfully for families, as well as being able to teach other practitioners how to do it. Um, following my DAN training, Great Plains came up. Uh, we did the first outreach clinic in Canada at my office in Mississauga. We saw about 18 children that weekend to get them started on their programs. And since then, I think from 2001 to 2005, I probably had seen and worked with about 15 children. From 2005 to today, it's been over 300. So the epidemic's certainly been catching up with my practice. These are the questions I was asking earlier. So as I said, with the presentation, I'm hoping that I'm gonna be able to help many of you get further with what you're doing, deeper into what you're doing, or if you are sitting on the fence about should you be doing biomedical, then I'm hoping that this will be part of uh, the various lectures you're gonna see this weekend that'll get you to that confident point. You know, of course, Jeff Bradstreet speaking on Sunday afternoon, he should be the clincher. You know, he's got just depth of experience a lot of good stories to tell, um, as I can, as to why you want to be doing this, 
in conjunction with your behavioral therapies, in conjunction with educational programs to help your kids. There's not one thing that's going to pull them out of this. It's going to be a collection of things, but certainly the parents I'm working with are saying that the biomedical treatments are helping their kids go further with their therapies. They're turning therapies on and getting results a lot quicker than they normally would have. So again, identifying trends. I also wanted to see if there was anything different happening with the kids that I was seeing versus what uh, Autism Research Institute puts out or what you would read in some of the books by, say, Dr. McCandless or Dr. Bach. You know? And I, there were certain things about two years ago as I was reviewing test after test after test and certain things were saying, am I seeing the same type of autism that gets talked about if I go to a Dan conference? And I wasn't really sure. So that's what got me motivated last year to start pulling the data um, out of the files off the kids that I'm working with. And I'm, through this, I'm really hoping that it'll be the start of helping to educate parents more about the environmental and lifestyle factors that are there. And that when you identify them, when you treat them, you get the results that you're looking for. You get the chance to recover your kids. So out of the office, we just pulled 25 charts on 25 children that had come in between November 2007 and August 2008. I ended up um, initially, the purpose to doing the research was to help, um, help me. I was accepted for doing a research poster presentation at, a, at the Geneva Center biannual conference in Toronto last October. I don't know if you're familiar with the Geneva Center here, or anybody that is. There's a few people. The Geneva Center is a very large um, institution in Ontario, largely geared around uh, behavioral therapies, educational therapies for the kids. There are actually 2,400 uh, parents, educators in attendance over the three days of that conference. It's one of the, one of the largest conferences on that. Disappointing from my perspective because very little information was there about biomedical treatments. And as Chris mentioned, subsequently the, study, the two studies that I've published so far were both printed in the Integrated Healthcare Practitioners Journal uh, back in December last year. So what we're looking at, what I was looking at, are very much as Dan would teach it to physicians when we do Dan training looking at uh, some of the major factors, including the diet, gastrointestinal problems, uh, infections principally, nutritional deficiencies, problems with detoxification, actually being able to get rid of the things that are in the kids' bodies that are having negative effects, principally on the nervous system. And as well, we're gonna be uh, looking a little bit about heavy metals, but Dr. Bratt's also going to talk about that in much more detail for you tomorrow. This is the testing that I typically do or recommend in my office when families first come to see me. It's a combination of urine testing, stool testing, and blood work.